Hi, guys. Hey, guys. I'm really proud of our show. Me too. Yeah. And we're going in a different direction now because we spent a better part of a year screwing around. Yeah, yeah. just making laughs, just building smiles and stuff. But yeah. I think our listeners deserve something a little bit better. No, they deserve us to be real. Yeah. yeah. So the whole episode's going to kind of be like I mean, this. it can't just be jokes all the time. Right? No, we can't tell jokes all the time. I want people to just know. pull their car over to the side right now and mm -hmm. just get real. Okay. Yep. Just put it in park. And I want you to grab the person next to you, wherever they are, grab them by the shoulders and square them up and look them in the eye and just say, I respect you. I think the world of you, but it's time for me to listen to Smartless. Here comes Smartless. You know? Yeah. Smart. Smartless. Look, I, I've been I've been notified. First of all, I just want to say before we start with our guests that uh, I was listening back to the interview with Sean Pan, and I and I heard a lot of listener feedback that I I asked potentially the longest question in the history of Smartless, and really? a lot of people, yeah, no, I, a lot of people really gave it to me. Guarantee that. Yep. So right. um, I heard it too. In fact, yeah, I haven't finished that interview. Uh, yeah. Listening to it because <laughs> because of the question, you haven't finished the question. I was so worn yeah. out with your. <laughs> God. But also people were saying, like, you know, you give Bateman a lot of shit for the long question, then you have one. And my answer to that is fuck off. Yeah, I love that answer. <laughs> you know, because then yeah, there's no... Yeah. Remember what I said earlier about you being sunny all the time? I know. I've been really prickly lately. That's so nice. Everybody looks really awake today. Yeah. Well, it's 20 minutes later than it used to be. Wow. <sighs> well, you're about to get into it with our guest then, because uh, our guest <laughs> is somebody who you do not want to tangle with. Oh, oh. wait. Crap. Yeah. Let me finish. Let me um, just say that our guests, and I know that you revere our guests and have a lot of respect for them, so this is going to be really interesting to see you dig your way out. Uh, oh I know that because we've talked about uh, him many times over the years. He's somebody who's a uh, uh, sort of like a, I don't know how you'd say it, like a cultural icon. Mike Tyson. As a, hold on. Somebody who I've always looked up to comedically, but also somebody who I've always looked up to for, uh, I think that he lands on the right side of a lot of things, which is he just applies a lot of what we like to call logic to um, to issues. Mm -hmm. And um, Ricky Gervais he, is back on the program. He ended up informing people in a way through his comedy show. He really informed, gave people a lot of real world information and education uh, that they probably didn't know that they they, were, they thought they were just signing up for a comedy program, and they actually got to learn. He's a clearly a very thoughtful guy. Um, I don't want to you know, belabor it too long just to say that he, he's somebody that I'm really, really honored that he's here, and um, I just think he's I, – I don't really know him. We've met a handful of times. going to be serious. Without further ado, Mr. John Stewart. Mr. Oh, Good Lord. Yeah. Look at the reveal. It's incredible. <laughs> and he's got a mask in his hand. Wait a minute. Did you have a mask over the camera? <laughs> I respected him until that, and then that just destroyed. I put it on my computer to make sure the, the computer doesn't get the virus. There we go. John, this is... Uh... Are you upset? Jason, I am. I was late. Can I tell you why I was late? Because I, I could tell it, it upset you a little bit, Jason. And you, you were trying to I get don't... rid of the uh, sound quality in your room? You, I you was working it. at an <laughs> orphanage. No. Oh, oh, Jesus. Let me see Go a kid. Show me one kid Hold right on. now. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? And I don't, I don't podcast much, so I don't know. Sure. There's plenty of room in the space. Yeah. Has Will been kidnapped? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Will's in a dark room. I'm in a cloth. I'm in a cloth booth inside the middle of a larger room that also has no furniture in it. So it's very. Yeah. Hey, listener, John Stewart doesn't hand out a bunch of interviews. No. He doesn't do no. this a lot. So I'm very long time honored, and uh, this is uh, a very nice of you to do this. Very John. thrilling. Yeah. Very thrilling. I'm delighted. You know. Uh, they told me, you know, you, you've got to do some promotion for this. What are you promoting? A show on Apple. Yeah. And uh, they gave me a list of podcasts, and, and yours was the only one on it. Wow. <laughs> That's not... A list so, of one? A list of one. No, I was excited to come and talk to you guys because you're three uh, very funny Nice, lovely gentleman. You're a nice back man. at you. Well, back thank you. you. We were we were gonna we were gonna get to the to the Apple show, but let's talk about it right off the bat. Let's, a little bit about what's going on with that. Oh, that I don't know. I mean, I'm here to talk about <laughs> whatever. What? Yeah. What is the show? Just tell it's, me what what it's called and when it's on, because I'm gonna be first in line. It's been too long. It, it's on Apple, but I, to be honest with you, I don't know how to access it. 
Sure. Uh, Wait, John, by the way, if it's on Apple, Jason means that he'll be first in line because he will have been halfway back the line and then he'll cut the line. I don't know if uh, you've seen. No, I didn't realize that. You can look that up. Yeah, when the iPhones first came out, Jason cut the line famously. No. <laughs> <laughs> Does he bigfoot the people? Dude, dude can, I, can I just tell you that? I don't uh, know if I've told this story before on our podcast, but uh -huh. when, the, when the first iPod came out, uh, iPhone, um, Jason said, Oh, you're gonna get you're gonna get like a special hookup and get the phone early. I said, Yeah, I'm gonna stay. Somebody's gonna send it to me. And yes, of course. He goes, Well, I'm gonna go wait in line like everybody else. I said, Great. So Bateman goes to I'm the, with the people. You know? So he goes mm -hmm. down to the Grove and he's trying to big time telling me these with the people. He goes to the Grove. I'm standing in line like Star Wars movie. Like a Star Wars movie. He, <laughs> and to his credit, he's there like 150th in line. Somebody, an employee at the Apple Store in the Grove, sees him goes up and says, Mr. Bateman, just please come this way. And he goes with him. Of course, the paparazzi get photos of him jumping the line, and he ends up getting more shit for that. <laughs> for jumping the line. <laughs> for jumping the line. For being a man of the people and jumping the line. It couldn't have been more beautiful. And when I called the paparazzi and, and told them to go get it. <laughs> and apparently a year later, uh, when I think it was Tim Cook, uh, was at the, uh, sort of like a, a, a meeting of the, the folks who were in charge of all this stuff, he literally said to them, let's make sure our VIPs get their phones ahead of time. Let's not pull another Bateman this year. <laughs> It's actually named after you. It was a yeah. very Pulling embarrassing. A uh, John, yeah. tell me about this Apple show. Is, is it a stand-up? Is it a scripted show? Is it something you're directing, you're in? It's not a stand-up show, and it's not a scripted show. It's more of a uh, kind of combining some of the things I learned on The Daily Show with, with some of the things I learned from, from being down in Washington. Sort of the, the ethos of it is kind of that, why, why are really obvious problems mm -hmm. that have solutions? Why don't they get addressed and fixed. And it's kind of the either side. Oh, we, we're, we're not doing that many of them. Uh, John, the, the, the description of that show, it, you are filling a surprisingly uh, huge hole in, in media right now. That, like, that's an obvious thing that I'm just shocked that no one's addressed yet, or maybe no one's as, as smart or as savvy as you. Well, um, watch the show. You'll see we don't actually get anything but done. my god there seems to be so many <laughs> obvious problems with obvious solutions that we That's just right. we tie ourselves into knots trying to figure out why they're not being solved when it you just it's a big fat green button somebody needs to push and everything will be right in the world jason i, I really wish you hadn't have given away the ending to my show <laughs> it's, it's, uh you know i mean we step right into this thing and five minutes into it you're like it's a fucking green button and i'm like oh that's great thanks thanks you know what i'm gonna blow season four of ozark how about that how about i jump in turns out you guys all move out of missouri and you fucking get your own boat john w would it be safe to say that your show is kind of the crying game of the new apple uh, streaming service but the surprise I don't think there's any i don't think there's any question about it and uh and now that it's been blown it turns out we were all dead the whole time there are you happy now jason we were all sleeping next to suzanne plachette it was just right. one big dream oh was that not the greatest it was pretty it was pretty good yeah. um yeah. Yeah, so, so uh, good. without at the risk of of doing a, another spoiler on is mm -hmm. it does it and to be slightly serious does it all kind of boil down to ignoring the squeaky minority and listen to the quiet majority uh, I think what, what we find is, and it's almost like uh, uh, the laws of thermodynamics, you know, a, a body at rest has a tendency to stay at rest and a body in motion has a tendency to stay in motion. And I think the status quo generally stagnant and does not like to take risks mm -hmm. or to put itself on the line when it may be held responsible for the consequences. And so what happens is there's a certain stagnation and there's a certain remove that the, the, the people generally in charge of things are at great remove from the people affected by things. Mm -hmm. And that when you permeate that kind of, that bubble that they are in, uh, it's very difficult to get them. It, it stemmed from, you know, I remember going down on, this is, I mean, can I, is this, uh, can I tell a, a heavier story? Or of is course, that, yeah. I mean, anything do. that starts with going down on. Yeah, you left off at going down on. <laughs> so I'm blowing a veteran. <laughs> um, the, uh, it, it was a revelation from the 9-11 hearings, and we were down there, and, uh, you know, these guys that had been on the pile for 9-11 and had suffered for really going on decades, the health effects of toxic exposures. And anybody who'd been down there knew, you know, they were told the air was, was safe, but 
I don't think things that smell like that are safe. Yeah, there's just some kind of statistic that I just that just came out this week about how many of them have passed away or are right. deathly ill. It's just awful. Tragic. Yeah. Uh, so we went down to testify in front of Congress, and we were there. This guy named John Field who runs the Feel Good Foundation, and uh, you know we we've lost some people that that we'd worked with. Ray Pfeiffer, who was a, a firefighter that had come down and lobbied with us, and, and this guy Lou Alvarez, who's a, a cop. Uh, he had been a in the armed forces, and then he was on the bomb squad. He's just this un- unbelievable guy. He'd been through like 160 chemotherapies, and, and you could Jesus. you see it on. Uh, and and we knew that we were losing Lou over the past six months to a year that that we've been advocating and bringing him down to DC. So we're down, and and Lou's to my right, and we're sitting, and we're in this room of of Congress people, half of whom don't even show up to the hearing. Right. It's like a hearing of like I think the committee's like 18 Congress people. It was like mm-hmm. seven that are there. Mm-hmm. Two of them, uh, Louis Gomer and Jim Jordan, who are, I think they're in the Dumbass Coalition. I think that's the <laughs> official title of what they're in. Uh, they come in, they sit for a minute, get counted as present, and then take their name tags and leave. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. So they, they count as present. Sure. Yep. So Lou gives his testimony, and it's it's about, you know, I'm here because I don't ever want other people to go through what I've been through. And I'm here to make sure that that, that doesn't happen. And, and mm-hmm. it just, it, Lou felt there's something off. It just wasn't, you know, this guy is pretty stoic to begin with. But I could tell, like, that night, his liver fails, he goes into hospice. That night, mm-hmm. literally on the way back from Washington, right? So I'm furious. I rip into the Congress people for their inattention, for their, you know, these guys answered the call five seconds after 9-11. It's been fucking 18 years. What are you doing? One of the Congress people, and I was complaining about how there was nobody there in the room. That's like seven Congress people. It's just, it, it's a metaphor for the way that we ignore. They all hold them up as heroes. Never forget the heroes of 9-11. Here these guys are, and nobody's in the fucking room. All right. right. Yeah. So the head of the committee, I think his name is, Elliot Cohen, he's a congressman, Democrat. He says to me, look, I understand you're upset, but please know, like, we're very busy. Yeah. And I was like, that right there crystallized for me what the issue was. I'm sitting next to someone who has decided to spend his last moments on this earth advocating for those who are suffering from similar fates to his, and trying to alleviate some of the consequences that they may face in the future if this doesn't get done. And this motherfucker is just like, I got 10 meetings today. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you can't expect me to go to all of them. <laughs> and so I was, I was it, to me, that's the disconnect. It's rhetoric versus reality. It's uh, those who are affected by things versus those that control them. Mm-hmm. And those dynamics, the Daily Show was like a, a, it was like being a weatherman for for like the daily bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that this show's kind of more of a climatologist view, kind of a how are these systems incentivized, mm-hmm. and, right? And how do how do we rearrange that? It's not just an observation, but how the fuck did we get here? And, yes. and I was going to kind of say, uh, I was going to bring that back to it. It seems very, to me anyway, to to a layman such as myself. And I actually don't get laid that often. Was mm-hmm. that that y- you started the Daily Show um, as a comedy show? It was kind of a Trojan horse, if you will. Um, in that you, it's a it was a hilarious, hilarious show. The only time I got to do it, you weren't even hosting. Somebody else was. I had like Cordry yeah. or somebody. No, that was in the contract. That was on purpose. <laughs> that yeah. was that was something that. It felt very personal. Yeah. It was before you had ever been in show business, and I had yeah. to put in there. If someone named Will Arnett <laughs> wow. ever gets in this business, please. Yep. <laughs> That's fucking foresight. And I, right. I, I, but I remember it, it seems to me you started doing that show, and it became so much more rel- not just comedically, but it also became very much part of the conversation because you can see the kind of, you know, the, you can see the, the genesis of these things, you know, as you railed against things comedically and the issues got more and more serious and you you kind of dug deeper into it, kind of, there, there did feel like there was a, a point where you were like, 
come on, everybody, what the fuck is going on? And my question is, did you then sort of graduate since you've left the, the Daily Show? Was there like a frustration threshold that you fucking burst through? You're like, I can't even joke about it anymore because this shit is so stupid. I got to do something And you people are it, acting yeah. like such fucking idiots. Was there a moment where you were just like, God, I can't even, it's not even funny almost anymore. How long was the question that you asked that people gave you shit for? I know. We'll trim how, it up. How long was it? We'll the Sean Payne question was a fucking embarrassment. <laughs> it was an embarrassment. <laughs> but I will say that my question just now was what we call half abatement. Half abatement. Half abatement. <laughs> half abatement. <laughs> that was All half right. abatement. Uh, we get half abatement. I mean, I think it's, look, satire has always been a way of processing things that mean a lot to you. So, Comedy has always been used to process things that, and it's, it's always a continuum. You know, it's, um, the show is a recipe. Sometimes it was incredibly silly. You know, yeah, we did an episode on 9-11 first responders, but I also got uh, a church choir to sing, go fuck yourself to uh, a reporter <laughs> on Fox News. Like it, it, it's always that kind of, you know, it's, it's scatological and it's, but at the heart of it, satire really isn't, it's comedy about things you you care deeply about. Mm. And that's always been the, the recipe. I think I probably just have gotten less elegant. Mm. Uh -huh. And we will be right back. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, is there something interfering with your happiness or you're feeling down or preventing you from achieving your goals? I know I just literally just described myself with those three things. Uh, it's been, you know, you go up and down, up and down in life, and uh, sometimes you slip into a little bit of a hole and you need somebody to talk to and, and get yourself out of it. Well, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist that you can start communicating with in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not a self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, and it's available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime, send a message to your therapist. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. It's really great. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed. It's way more affordable than traditional offline therapy. And the great thing is financial aid is totally available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today, day, day, day. Visit betterhelp.com slash smartless, that's better H-E-L-P, and join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Special offer for smartless listeners, hey guys, get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash smartless. We get support from all form. As a Smartless listener, you've probably heard us mention how much we love our Helix mattresses, right? I mean, live for my Helix mattress. It's the best mattress I've ever had. That's why we're excited to tell you that Helix has left the bedroom and started making sofas via their new company, Allform. Allform is the easiest way to customize a sofa using premium materials and at a fraction of the cost of traditional stores. You can pick your fabric. It's spill, stain, and scratch resistant. The sofa color the color of the legs, sofa size and shape to make sure it's perfect. So you've heard me talk about all form for a while now. I don't know what, it's been several months and how awesome it is. And, you know, Scotty has the chair in his studio and I go back there and he's kind of like sick of me sitting there staring at him. So what he did was he took the chair out of the studio, put it back inside the house and he made a dunce cap for me. <laughs> and the dunce cap fits perfectly, but not as perfect as the all form chair. Where I just, it fits my body perfectly and I melt right into it. It's pretty awesome. If getting a sofa without trying it in stores sounds a little risky, don't worry. You get 100 days to decide if you want to keep it. And if you don't love it, they'll pick it up for free and give you a full refund. They even offer a forever warranty. Finally, we get the comfort of our Helix mattresses in our living rooms. To find your perfect sofa, check out allform.com slash smartless. And Allform is offering 20% off all orders for our listeners. Allform.com slash smartless. We get support from Grubhub. We sure do, Sean. And let me tell you something. Grubhub is something I love to really hub because I do a lot of television watching. And oh. when you watch television, you work up an appetite, especially when it's 
real tasty reality television. Have you seen Below Deck? I live for Below Deck. I watch I watch it all the time. Oh, Do you love it? Nothing gets me snackier. Mm-hmm. So Grubhub, look, they work hard to serve restaurants because they love them. From the food to the passion and determination of the people behind it, they know that a restaurant's reputation matters and they'll be damned if that reputation suffers because of them. Good food deserves good service, delivered fast, fresh, and exactly how restaurants intended it to be. Restaurants work hard to serve their customers and Grubhub works hard to serve them. And that is why Grubhub guarantees your food will get to you on time within the delivery window and for the lowest price compared to other apps. Or, (laughs) Sean, you you're going to get back at least $5 in perks. That way, you can experience your food just like the restaurant intended. Well, I use Grubhub all the time, uh, especially, you know, in the last couple of years because of obvious reasons. You don't want to go anywhere. But it's fantastic. Everybody's friendly. It's timely. It delivers right to your door in no time flat. It's great. So listen, order through the Grubhub app or online. Grubhub. We serve restaurants. And now back to the show. You know, John... Yeah, Your daily help for those of us who are not as informed was so appreciated mm-hmm. yes, and agreed. I'm sure incredibly effective. Agreed. It seems like we need not less of you, but more of you. We need- it's to make it as rarefied as you can get. I want to be the <laughs> saffron of comedy. John? Rich, little bit of flavor, put it into the sauce. It creates maybe a tinge of color, but you never want too much. We're at a multi-bell alert here. Um, Is there any chance of, I mean, I know you've directed the movie or two. Uh, You've had a kid or four. Mm. You've relaxed, I'm sure. Can Mm -hmm. you get back on the stick and help us out? Oh, Um, I've been on, I've been on it, baby. And by the way, there's, there's so much on there. You know, we're also used to the idea of that form now. Mm -hmm. So it's, You know, there's a lot of it. uh, It it was time for me, you know, as far as leaving the Daily Show, like I just, I I, I didn't leave because I didn't care anymore. I left because I I couldn't think of another interesting way to evolve the show. And you, I I would imagine you guys feel this too, is I don't feel public pressure. I feel the pressure from the people that I work with. Mm. Like when you're leading one of those shows, you owe it to them to try and kind of inspire them to come in with a certain amount of enthusiasm and a certain amount of directionality and a certain amount of, you know, leadership. Sure. So you don't feel like a weird responsibility because you're so good at what you do. And like we we keep saying, you know, there hasn't been anybody like you, nor has there been. No, I think there's like 10 of them. No, no, but but what I'm saying is- I think we're in pretty good shape. But your ability to deliver the news and let the the medicine go down easy uh, is is just incredibly valuable. But I wonder sometimes if that's even a good thing. You know, I I, I got to a certain point where, you know, if the medicine goes down so easy, maybe you don't even realize you need medicine. But if the only other option is that people simply won't even seek out the medicine, I'd rather it go down easy than them just keep their head in the sand and, you know, watch Judge Judy. We've also, by the way, yeah. she <laughs> has been on fire. Come on. Yeah. On <laughs> I know. fire. Incredible talent. Can I tell you the other day, yeah. Judy, I, yeah. I, I watch her enough to just call her Judy. Sure. Uh, sure. There was a, a woman, she was rebutting the, the gentleman. It was a rental issue. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And sure. Judy, just with a simple, didn't even finish the word don't. Just duh, duh, <laughs> duh, yeah. duh, yeah. duh. Just different forms <laughs> of the letter D. Duh, duh, as long D, as you get the eyebrows duh. up as yeah. high as possible, all you need is the D. At a certain point, didn't even hit the consonant. Uh-huh. Uh, no, and that's power. Shut it down. Verdict for the plaintiff. That's yeah. ultimate power. That is that is Jeez. studied and learned in like yeah. No, I re- I love Judge Judy to, to be clear, and I see her all eating Chinese food. All that I used to anyway down around the corner. Sure. So here here's the thing. We, you know, a lot of the times when you're on TV all the time, and people just assume that you live inside that box, right? Uh-huh. Uh, in the world, and then when you when years have gone and you haven't been inside the box, people are like. What happened? Where did you go? What What are you doing? And it's like, what do you mean? What am I doing? I have a life outside of that box, and but I fall into that same dumb category. When you just came on the screen here right now, I was like, oh my god, John Stewart, I love John Stewart, and and but I I fucking fell in that same thing. I'm like, where's John Stewart been? Now I know you've been directing things, and I know you've been around, but for those people like myself, it was like like Jason was saying, it's so important. You're so missed 
in that in that arena that well we've seen. there's also a nostalgia around that to some extent and i listen don't get me wrong fellas i appreciate this and it's very kind yeah. of you but there is a a nostalgia that grows around something that you remember more fondly yeah. than than perhaps at the time and at the time we were mm. inconsistent at times uh we were controversial at times i took my fair share of shit not from you guys, mostly. Jason, yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but, and by the way, you're one of the best interviewers, maybe the best interviewer, yeah. uh, full stop. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, we can get into that later, but that was also awesome, just a, as, a, as a guest and as a viewer. Uh, but just, there is uh, a unmatched. certain uh, golden glow that nobody remembers you more fondly. But remember, there's also the reverse of that, which is nothing turns to disappointment and anger faster than love. And when sure. people fall in love with a program or they fall in love with what you do. Yes, that's yeah. so true. There's, I mean, for God's sakes, they're going after Ted Lasso. Yeah. Are they really? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> What's oh, really? going on So well, I guess my point is I try really hard to insulate and isolate myself from external yeah. commentary. Yeah. Yeah. I really rely on a moral barometer that that is developed with the people that work with you on the show yeah. to discern whether or not we're doing good work, where we can improve it, always yeah. examine it. But I really try and block out the... Yeah, my question was just, what the hell have you been doing? Oh, what have I been doing? <laughs> that yeah, was my Sean, only question. Sean's just like, where have you been? He's been advocating for fucking people who don't have a voice, you asshole. Stupid and I'm so dick. sorry that he's not no, on your that, fucking I know TikTok. that. I want, that was a, a leading question so you could inform our listeners well, he's in the fucking of what you've been up to. And you're wondering why he's not dancing with his kids on fucking TikTok and dabbing. Fucking I mean, what Sean is your Hayes, fucking problem? You stupid ass. I have been dabbing. Okay. <laughs> a few years too late. I love bringing up dabbing because my 13-year-old literally, if I mention the word dabbing, he looks at me like, don't fucking say another word. Why are you talking? <laughs> Let's ask Sean's three-minute question in 30 seconds. Um, what have you been doing? And if it's been raising children and prepping another movie, let's hear about that, please. Good question, Jason. I have been raising children. Oh, oh it's okay when Jason asks it. <laughs> yeah, because I did it in about 10 <laughs> seconds. You you know, hey, Will, Will, can we start, you know, like, I know you love hockey. You know, guys yeah. have like a two-minute uh, penalty box thing. Yeah. We maybe start implementing that right. for 20 seconds, let's say. Right? I like that. Okay. Fair so enough. The, just know that's dangling there, hey. Will Arnett, do you still play hockey? Are you still, is no. it something that you will still go out and play? No, the last time I went out and actually played, uh, I was so, uh, I left the rink, I remember, with my bag and kind of smiling at some, just pick up, and I left like, yeah, oh, so great. And I went home and I iced my legs for 24 Aww. hours. I know I didn't want anybody to know, and I was like, "Fuck, I'm done." I just right. love that done. nice high shelf ass, though, on you, don't you? Well, no, yeah. <laughs> Does I, he I, have I, sort of a shelf? Yeah, real skater ass. That's nice. No, I, I've got a what, what we refer to <laughs> in the in the ass. NHL. I got a pro dumper, John. And um, yeah. John, do you play hockey? I know you're a soccer guy. I'm a big soccer guy too. I did not play. Uh, I did not play hockey, and unfortunately, uh, my shelf collapsed about three years ago. Oh, oh no. My shelf ass, yeah. Uh -huh. Same thing happened to Jason. We're actually, we just opened an investigation into the guy who stole his ass because we're trying to find <laughs> it. Jason, I don't know if this happened to you, but my ass was there one day and then gone the next, almost like if you've ever seen an ice flow calf. Like uh, <laughs> it, it was there and it was hanging on a thread and then suddenly the ass began to slowly and it hit the water in kind of a spectacular a splash and that was your realization was probably less horrific than mine because i didn't find out mine had dropped until i saw it on national television um, <laughs> um you know going away there on uh, laura lenny poor thing um, oh no on, that's oh, not those true are, that's yeah. not well, true. There's, I mean, look. look there's a little bit of a hang there there's no, a, there's, look, there's look a crease that i didn't use to I gotta tell have you. at the bottom of my right buttock that scene quite honestly i remember turning to my wife and saying <laughs> That's got to be stunt cheeks, because that can't be Bateman. I know Bateman isn't that robust. You're nice man. Stunt cheeks. That's his, um, that's his stage name. Yeah. That's the name I danced under. <laughs> As we get into uh, uh, sports and stuff, and I mentioned soccer, so I know that you did play soccer. You played soccer in college. What, yes, what I like to refer to as football. Uh, the beautiful game. You're talking about the beautiful game. I'm oh, a boy. fucking nut for it. The last 10 years, I've just gone crazy. Do you watch a lot? Uh, I watch uh, quite uh, mostly Premier League. I don't watch much. Yeah. Of, you know, I'm not. I'm not so nuts that it's like Serie A. 
you know, La Liga. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I'll, I'll watch Premier League. I'll follow Liverpool. And, Same. Uh, I'm a big Liverpool supporter. Take yeah. it easy. Yes. Jesus, I know. Calm I down. Know. Yeah, no, it's so good. Yeah. Okay, what about what about kids? I see a sippy cup in the background. Yes. Is that yours or a child's? That's actually, I think it's a candle that my wife put in oh. here. Uh, it's, it's, uh, she likes to make things look nice in, in my office because she knows that I don't look nice in my office. It's an, it's a nice contrast, but my children, my, my son just got his driver's license. Uh, wow. oh. he's seven. What? <laughs> so good. Uh, no, he's, he just turned 17. My daughter is, uh, going to be 16. So we're that? sort of kind of enjoying our last couple of years. Wait, are you doing like a, are you doing the college tours and stuff like that? And we're getting ready to do that. Um, we're going to do it pandemic style, so yeah. it's a lot of uh, you know. I, I don't know how that's going to fly, or um, uh, I imagine private. Listen, well, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I just I just took my my uh, our almost thirteen year old to his first. He just went to his first day of middle school, and I can tell you that was uh, rough watching my baby mm -hmm. um go into the world like a uh, like a quasi adult it was a very scary moment middle school is 6th grade 7th seventh seventh grade 7th grade, grade. grade yeah yes so he was going yeah. to 7th grade and it was oh it was so scary it changes quickly so i'll give you a little this is a little story of how like and i noticed it cuz when they're teenagers they really become people quickly my daughter when she used to get sick and you need an antibiotic you remember you'd, you'd go to the pharmacy and they don't give you pills. They can't swallow pills. So they would make those concoctions, mm -hmm. like mm. banana chocolate erythromycin, yeah. you know, and you'd yeah. shake it up. And I have one of those every morning. Oh, they're delicious. Yeah. yeah. I, I give it to her, and she used to be, she would take it like this. <laughs> Stink face. And it would take 45 minutes yeah. Yeah. to get sure. her to do one. So about six months ago, uh, she has strep. So we get her... Um, or was it, she had a terrible cold and I got her NyQuil. That's what it was. So I give her the NyQuil. I pour it, I hand it to her. She does this. <laughs> like a shot. Like a right. shot. And I go, oh, you're drinking now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's right. what I'm saying. Like you learn, right. life comes right. at you fast. I had a couple more questions, John, just because I find you interesting. <laughs> yes, Sean. <laughs> Um, who I've always wondered because when you've done your show for so long, please ask looked, him his favorite color. Please ask him his favorite color. When you've done your show, I look at you and I go, "What is your favorite color?" I wonder what that guy's favorite color is. <laughs> no, I wonder how because I think people, millions of people, looked at you as the guy who had the answers. You were such a leader, right? In your in your lane, and so who did you admire? Who do you admire now? Who do you look up to? Kind of in your same field, who is a game changer in world issues that you maybe commiserate with, or who is that person or people? Fareed Zakaria. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I look to anyone on the MSNBC weekend slate. Okay, very good, very good. Um, I don't, and I, you know, it's interesting. I, I think where are you getting your info? Well, like, I think like most people, I'm, I'm getting it through a fucking fire hose up my ass like everybody else. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, this world is nothing but info. It br yeah. brings up a good point. Jason, you are convinced that there is a secret source of info out there that people have <laughs> access to because he asks people a lot of stuff. There's a, there's a funnel of information that, that, the, that the media outlets are, uh, have access to and then- a Fire hose. Yes. And, and so I'm assuming that those in privileged places like yourself might still have contacts, leads, sources mm -hmm. that you might I keep do. warm. Yeah. I do, I do. There's something called, I have it, Apple News. Yeah. Oh, God. Huh. And what I'll do is I'll click on it. Uh huh. Yeah. And then, then a what? variety of stories will come up, places that I follow. Do you do the thing that I, I found myself doing recently, which is when I'm about to, like, having a moment, like, oh, I'm going to check the news or I'm going to check Twitter and stuff. And I now have this moment where I go, how frustrated do I want to be right now? Do I want to <laughs> ruin my mood? <laughs> Right, you know, you know, and that and that leads to this this issue we started talking about, which is, you know, how do you balance? Certainly, you. How did you balance, uh, and how do you continue to balance? How much you uh, allow yourself to be exposed to, weighed against your ability to affect change. When you had the Daily Show, 
I would imagine you could risk exposing yourself to something that might upset you because you had an outlet for that and you could possibly affect change at five o'clock or whenever you guys would start to, because you could share that information to the masses and maybe some change would come. I, I don't think that was though, it's, it's not purposeful like that. You know, I think, you know, the, the, the amount of change you can affect is, is really, I have one kind of monkey trick and that is that you can turn if you have the ability to conduct light, in other words, like if, if what you do will attract attention, mm -hmm. then the only real trick you have is you can deflect that light or attention onto something you think is interesting, mm -hmm. worthwhile, funny, yeah. whatever. But what I learned about all this is I think sometimes we, can tr we confuse cultural power with power. Mm. Oh, yeah. And the, having a mouthpiece with being an effective agent of change. And the truth is that change takes place incrementally over time through the concerted, it's manual labor. It's true, but there is now more than ever a, 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 pr a pressure that is generated through media, through social. Um, but there, it's not, it's, it's not. So I used to, I was raised on the ethos of the emperor's new clothes, right? Mm -hmm. That was the, the fable, you know, uh, the emperor, uh, he says he's got a beautiful new coat and he walks down the street and the little boy says, oh, he's naked. And that breaks the spell. And by pointing out absurdity or hypocrisy, the spell is broken. And that was kind of the way that I was raised, that I thought the world worked. What I didn't realize is, you know, that you don't ever follow the story and how it is now is he's not wearing any clothes and then the crowd turns and rather than laughing, they turn and go, you're running a pedophile ring. <laughs> and your fake yeah. news. Right. And, and then they cast the boy out and then everybody takes off their clothes and they all just pretend that that's how that it was. So my point about that is shining a light on things can be weighted out. I think what, what those in power have realized is the attention span, especially in a modern media environment, has the circadian rhythms of Twitter in that right. it's ephemeral, it's ubiquitous mm -hmm. and it's meaningless. And so if you're going to bring shame, you better be ready to bring it over time. And it has to be concerted. So I always view what we do as these people that are bringing the real effort, you know, let's just amplify them in a way that makes it clear that we're not going to go away. Yeah. Because unless they feel that there's consequence to their shame, Nothing gets done. And the only way they'll feel like there's consequence to the shame is if the shame will be unceasing. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Smartless is supported by Noom. So Noom is here to change how we see food with a psychology-based approach that looks at what you eat, but also how you eat, which is an interesting concept. So instead of making you feel guilt or regret, which I understand very well, Noom empowers you to keep going. Noom's cognitive behavioral approach helps you unlearn bad habits and better understand your relationship with food. 80% of Noom users finish the program and over 60% have stuck with their goals for at least a year. Now with Noom, taking care of your health is empowering instead of stress-inducing. So daily check-ins, I don't know, they take just like 10 minutes. And so you don't have to worry about it taking up huge chunks of your time. And I love this idea. They can help somebody. If you have a goal, you can help achieve it. And it's not all this kind of th these crazy things where you're filled with stress and you're filled with guilt or you feel like it, you're not doing it. You're not hitting your goals and you're not doing this. You're not doing that at all. You get to take charge and feel empowered about achieving whatever it is your, your sort of weight goals are in a really good positive way. And I think that it's through that sort of positive reinforcement that you're actually going to get the results that you want. So start building better habits for healthier long-term results. Sign up for your trial at noom.com slash smartless. Again, that's noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash smartless to sign up for your trial today. Listener, everybody loves to be supported. And let me tell you something, the support we receive from Liquid IV is tremendous. All right. And that's good because I do a little bit of uh, cardio. And so that means sweating. And when you're sweating, you become dehydrated unless you replenish your hydration with something as great as 
Liquid IV, you guessed it. Making hydration a priority helps us feel healthier on a day-to-day -day basis, and it fuels us to be our highest potential. With Liquid IV, just one stick in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. And not only that, but the product tastes great with flavors like watermelon, strawberry, lemon, lime. I could go on. Liquid IV contains five essential vitamins, more vitamin C than an orange, as much potassium as a banana, and less sugar than an apple. It's made with clean ingredients. It's non-GMO. It's vegan for gosh sakes. And it's free of gluten, dairy, soy, and so many other dangerous things. Liquid IV is on a mission to change the world, guys. The company is donating 4 million servings in response to COVID-19. Products are being donated to hospitals, first responders, food banks, veterans, and active military. They've donated over 11 million servings globally. Good God, get yourself some. Help this company out because they're helping you out. Out. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code SMARTLESS at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code SMARTLESS at liquidiv.com. I'm, um, I'm going to go hydrate right now because I worked up quite a sweat. I apologize. This episode is brought to you in part by Native. Let me ask you a question. Do you know the difference between an antiperspirant and a deodorant? So here's the deal. Antiperspirants contain aluminum, which forms a plug in your sweat glands to stop you from sweating. Native deodorant does not contain aluminum or parabens or sulfates. It's vegan and never tested on animals. Native just works to keep you smelling fresh all day long. So Native deodorant is made with ingredients you've heard of, like uh, coconut oil and shea butter, but... Making the switch to an aluminum-free deodorant does not mean you have to sacrifice on performance. Native will keep you smelling and feeling fresh all day long. With over 10 scents, including their classics, and rotating seasonals, you're guaranteed to find one you love. Their classic scents include coconut and vanilla, lavender and rose, cucumber and mint, and eucalyptus and mint. Besides their classic deodorant, Native offers an unscented option and a baking soda-free formula for those with sensitivities. Trying to cut down on your plastic use? Great. Native even has a deodorant made of 100% paperboard packaging. For all those people who want to make that jump and you've heard all the stuff about antiperspirants that make you nervous, here's your solution. It's right here. You've been looking for this, and it's right here in front of you, and I'm telling you about it. How good is that? It's Native. You're going to love Native as much as we do. Right now, you can save 20% on your first purchase. Go to nativedo.com slash smartless or use promo code smartless at checkout. That's nativedo.com slash smartless or use promo code smartless at checkout to save 20% on your first purchase. All right, back to the show. It occurs to me that potentially... There was a time, you know, there's that stat that, that technology increases 30 times, every 10 years it's 30 times greater than the previous 10 years. And that's oh. astonishing. And I think that we always, you know, you know, when we had the Jetsons, we always thought like, this is what the future is going to be. It's all going to be about technology. And truthfully, I think the thing that nobody ever saw was the thing that was going to be the most important thing was information and the way that it's delivered and the volume of the, the sheer volume of it and the way that it can be really wielded as a weapon and, and be weaponized in a way that we couldn't imagine. We thought that the, for instance, the Nazis had manipulated information to a way that we couldn't fucking believe. And that was, it. you know, uh, almost 100 years ago. Now we have people who have perfected it and have, and uh -huh. have found channels to, and, you know, vessels to do that in ways that are so incredibly harmful. But don't you think that we should have known that? Because it's... Of course we should have. The one thing that is consistent in, in people is that whatever progress we make will be perverted. That everything yes. has that dual, you know, so when you think about the algorithm, right? So artificial intelligence, we're working to create, you know, this kind of intelligence that is far beyond the capacity that what we could do. And we will use it to advance the cause of longevity and the health and welfare of all the people. And what if we decided to use it for a way to keep you watching YouTube longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that's what we use. The, everything that we do gets perverted because, you know, if I may quote MC Hammer yeah, for no, a moment. Please, Sean does it all the time. Oh, fucking yeah. time. He went, he, he was on somewhere and, and I can't remember where it was, but he said, you cannot consider the measure of something without considering the measurer. 
And the point is like, all these things are tools, but they are tools that are wielded by people. Mm. And people are flawed and are always looking for advantage. So, you know, think about every, every bit of progress we've ever made through, through science, let's say, like whether it's chemical or biological or sonic or anything, any progress we make, somewhere, someone has tried to weaponize it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's, you, we always have to take that into account. Everything that we get, what's better than the combustion engine to create progress and to lift people out of poverty? And what creates global warming? Like everything, it's, it's all a fucking balance. Yeah. And we just have to try and do it without falling over. The wheel led, led to, uh, you know, car deaths. Think about it that way. <laughs> Okay. So where where are you going to flush all the all all the all the you know so much that is that is so unsettling? Where do you go to flush all that out? Is it the bottom of a bong? Or are you watching a nice cartoon? Um, what do you or you meditate? What what do you what do you what do you what do you do? I, play, I try and play the drums. That's oh, it. Nice. I am not musical. I took it up when I left the show, and. I always wanted to interact with music and I'm terrible at it. <laughs> so I was gonna learn how to play guitar. I don't know if you guys have ever played anything, but like I sat down with the guitar and I was like, oh, hurts my fingers. This is yeah. fucking hard. It hurts yeah. my fingers. And it's gonna take me three years before I can even just play Blackbird slowly. Right. <laughs> but I know how to bang on shit. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And so I could interact with music really quickly. Yeah. What I didn't realize is how. Bongos are with sticks. No, no, no. With, with the oh, sticks, oh, they're right there. Sticks. Let's hear a right little something, John. I keep yeah. in my office, I have a little pad. Oh, let's that's here. here. Paradiddle, 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 paradiddle. So I'm nice. banging around all the time. But the thing that's incredible about it is, so it's all about like limb independence and creating these rhythmic connections that didn't exist before. Mm. And you can't do them when you first try them, but if you slow them down yeah. and you go through it kind of, mechanically and, and with purpose. You can rewire. Slowly yeah. you rewire. Yeah. And suddenly now you can do it at speed and you're creating connections that never occurred. And you can almost feel the synapses in your brain crack. It's like the opposite of death. <laughs> and for me, I just like making shit, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives me a feeling of well-being or purpose or anything yeah. along those lines. Yeah. And so discovering that, it was only five years ago, was a real eye-opener. You, Yeah, you hit Sean. Sean loves that because he, he likes making. He likes making his uh, housekeeper turn the channel on DirecTV <laughs> and shit. So he loves I like the sound of the click. I like yeah. the sound <laughs> of the click. You Metronome know. is the best thing yeah. in the world. <laughs> uh, no, but it's like anything what you just described, as long as you want it. As long as you mm -hmm. want to learn something, as long as you want to expand your hobbies, your brain, your synapses, like you say, and you take your time to do it because you want to do it, you will get better at it. John, do you want to direct another movie? Yes, I do. Did you love it? I loved it. Oh, bossing people around in different countries. <laughs> oh, I mean. Yeah, sounds action, terrible. Cuss. I mean, it's just the dictatorial force yeah. that flows through your cut. Cut. Again. That sweater. Ah, no, shit. no, put him in that sweater. Yeah. No, put him in that sweater. <laughs> I love it. Speaking of which, did you wear a, fa a, a fancy director outfit on, on your set days? No way. Do no you way. think Egyptian silk is fancy? <laughs> <laughs> not if you're in or Egypt. How do, you, how do you define it? If you shot in Egypt, <laughs> yeah. it's not fancy. I, we actually went there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I actually went to, we, we shot in Jordan, and a friend of mine hosted a show in Cairo right during the middle of the revolution oh and he invited God. me to come on and I went to Cairo like a week before they overthrew Mohammed Morsi. It oh was God. fucking chaos. Wow. Hey, is wow. it safe to go there anymore? Can we go to Egypt yet or no? Oh yeah, no, it was safe then too. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't unsafe. He means him and Scotty, their bags yeah. are packed and it's safe go. We want to see where the, We want to see where the aliens built those pyramids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we went inside them and it's, it's you really? very weird. It's yeah, like I when you, go. you ever visit where they built the Star Wars sets it's all hollow behind it. The whole thing. Don't tell, oh, yeah. don't tell Sean that. It, oh, I'm it's just sorry. a don't, bunch of two by fours. It's not. What do you mean? It's yeah. not real. I don't believe that it's not real. It's, when you get up close, you go, "Oh my God, that's just magic marker." They just yeah. drew that in. John, John, I always, I always considered you. You always feel like, like you were like the senior when, when we were freshmen in in comedy, yeah. and yeah. I still feel that way. And, Thank and, you. and I appreciate. I, it. I look up to you in that way. <laughs> and and who, you're, you're. 
your sort of your class, your grade, I mean, your contemporaries. We had um, we're, well, obviously Colbert, those uh -huh. are, uh, the close good buddy of yours, and and, and you uh, were instrumental in getting his show off the ground. He came out of the Daily Show onto the Colbert uh -huh. Report. Um, who else were your contemporaries? Who were the people that you came up with, like? in stand-up and in that time in New York when you were doing stand-up in, in the 80s? So so that was all like, uh, the class before us had just graduated and moved out to Los Angeles. So my my right. class was, you know, down in the comedy cellar was Colin Quinn, uh, Ray yeah. Romano, Chappelle, uh, Rock and Sandler were more comic strip guys, but they would come downtown. But that was the same sort of uh, era. Uh, Leary, wow. Laura Keitlinger, um, how that fun. was kind of the David Tell. What a great time for, oh, for comedy. What an incredible, fantastic. like the golden era of stand-up oh, in a way. And the best part was the money. Yeah, sure, of course. I mean, <laughs> so much. You know, you're working, you're working five nights a week for a plate of hummus and a couple of falafels. That yeah. was <laughs> yeah. rock. But I will say you just- We loved it. But, but, but so you guys are there, you're doing, yeah, you're going down to the comedy cellar, you're not, you're making right. five bucks or whatever. But back then too, the comedy cellar wasn't the comedy cellar. It was, it, it did one show a night, except on weekends, they would do two shows a night. But it what now you go down there on a Tuesday and they're going to do four shows and the yeah. houses are packed. And I used to go on every night. I worked, I was a day bartender at a Mexican restaurant up the block, which is, Jesus by the way, yeah. just, I don't want to romanticize oh, wait, wait. On, on, the day on, bartending at a Mexican restaurant. On Bleecker? On Bleecker? That's uh, on McDougal, Panchitos. Oh. Can yeah. I tell you a great story about working at Panchitos? So yeah. being a day bartender in a Mexican restaurant, you are basically just like a laborer that's preparing margaritas and fruit for the night bartender to come in <laughs> and fucking clean up. Yeah. yeah. And so you make, you, nobody tips you out because there's nobody there. But there was this guy, Bob, who ran the place. He, he owned it. I left Panchitos probably in 1988, mm -hmm. 1989, and finally was making, you know, the $15 a night at the Comedy Cellar and decided I'm, not, I'm just going to focus on that. Maybe 25 years later, I'm walking down a village street. Now, this is after the success of The Daily Show. And every, I'm the big man walking through the old neighborhood, pointing <laughs> sights out. It, I had my first uh, falafel sandwich. <laughs> I see the guy who owned Panchitos walking towards me. It's been 25 years. As he gets closer to me, he just goes, John. And just keeps... <laughs> nice. <laughs> just nods, fucking, says John. Dude, that is... John. That first of all, <laughs> so New York, yeah. right? Like, cause like, who gives a shit? Yeah, you're the big man, but also yeah. like, yeah, you're John, John. So how's it going? That's right. That's right. <laughs> By the way, I, I need you to pick up a shift. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was walking down Seventh Avenue a few years ago, walking by this bar that will remain McManus at the corner of Nineteenth and Seventh. Sure, McManus. And I yeah. drank there every night for five. I, I claimed that I could have gone to law school with the time and money I spent in there. I could have mm -hmm. easily. Uh, so anyway, so I'm walking with my dad. And year, those drinking years are far behind me at that point. And I'm walking along. And as we're coming, we're, we're moving from 20th Street, we're walking on 7th Avenue, and they're just getting closer. I say, this place, uh, this is the place we manage where I spend every night for about five, seven years, just six nights a week, hammered. And I see one of the bartenders standing outside, this guy Mike, and he's uh, smoking a cigarette. And, he's, and I go... Yeah, God, I, every night for five, six years, I and I look up and, and I see Mike and I go, isn't that right, Mike? And he goes, you got it, Will. <laughs> <laughs> we never broke stride. I never stopped to say hi. We just kept walking. It, fucking, <laughs> it was incredible. Yeah. You That's could have had awesome. the best production. You could never time that out that well. Uh. Hey, uh, uh, John, so the, your kids uh, on the doorstep of, uh, of going uh, to, to college and you yeah. being an empty nester, uh, have, yeah. have, have you and the missus uh, started the plans for, uh, for, for empty nesting, how you're going to distract yourself from the sadness, uh, or is it going to be all euphoric? Well, I mean, Christ. for us, it's just waiting for you schmucks to put out more TV. Mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead, Jason. Sure. We sit at home. Fucking, and we just yeah, wait when for, is that fucking? Is there a new episode of Ozark? Can we do oh, anything yeah, when's here? The Ozark I, I coming think, out? Uh, I think January. That that's what I'm. That's oh, all. I'm fucking think. hurry it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're making it right and now. Spin it off. We're almost because done. I need content. So it's just going to be TV. That's that's what you're telling me. That's no. what's going to be the 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 tonic no, you for know, you. We 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 have a a, a farm 
and mm-hmm. uh, we've got it's like a rescue farm for cows and uh, uh, pigs and goats and sheep. Mm-hmm. And um, we work with you know we really I lived in the city for so many years and we moved out I don't know five six years ago and just the quality of life man it's good for you I, I spent so many years looking through the the the, the tube of the you know the paper towel the, holder the, the cardboard table holder <laughs> yeah. doing the daily show like so focused. And, and I was so worried about like, oh my God, what am I going to do when I don't have that anymore? And then when I took it out, I was like, oh. Yeah. No. Yeah. The, you, oh, oh, so you guys have been working in the whole world. Yeah. I've only yeah. been working in the, and, and so. How old were you when you started The Daily Show? How old were you? Oh God, I was already like 35. Oh. I started, The Daily Show was my, if this doesn't work out, Panchitos is looking yeah. for another day bar right, right, right. You know, it was one of those. Right. Hey, John. Hey John. Hey John. Hey John. <laughs> John Wait, hey John. What, that's a good question. What is everybody else's? Do you guys have plans? Like Sean, what's your plan? Your ten-year plan? Work my balls off. That's I'm, it. I think I'm going to be done at sixty, between sixty and sixty-five. I'm, I'm really going to be done. Yeah, but then what? Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to stay in LA? Or are you? I don't gonna, know. I know what degree? is that? What is it? What, I got to tell you, with your skin, Sean, yeah. I'd keep yeah. going. Look at him. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> right? It's beautiful. Thanks, thanks. I'd keep going. I don't see the sun. Uh, John, we've taken up way too much of your time. We didn't even get to if you had any shit stories because uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Colbert was on here and he told a forty-minute shit story about Conan, which was oh. sounds like it was very true. Yeah. yeah. But we've taken up way too much of your time. We'll uh, leave you on that up note. Yeah. Yeah. Beauty, John Stewart, man, you're a fucking legend. You're it's a pleasure awesome. to see you guys. Yes. Lots of love to you. you. I've enjoyed this very much, uh, uh, and thank you for making it easy and simple and lovely. And uh, you've done uh, the same for us anytime yes. we were on your show, sir. Thank yes. you so right. so much yeah. for this. Rob Corddry did the same for me when I was on your show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, Rob wasn't even. I mean, we went through so many people just to see who would do it. Obviously. I mean, at that point, it was Colbert, Oliver, That's uh, Sam B. It was, I mean, we went through every. And finally, Corddry was like. Short straw. I'll just fucking jump he in. He was the only one left in the city. There was there was a skeleton crew too, if yeah, I remember goes, correctly. I, I, I remember the quote was exactly this: "I'll take the hit." <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. John thank you, Stewart, thank you, man. Lots of love to uh, you. Great to talk to you guys. Thank you, John. You See you soon. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. You did it, Will. You did it. Yeah. You did it again. That was a good one. You delivered the golden goose right there. Hmm. That's the man. What's embarrassing is that Jason had asked him a few times, and uh, and I guess he had said no. No, that was that was Ryan Reynolds. Oh, that was Ryan, and then Ryan said yes to me. Remember he that? He sure did. He sure did. He Boy, sure you're did. not holding on to that, <laughs> Jason. Jason, you asked John Stewart to be on. Do you know? Do you know how mad Amanda is? By the way, Amanda's mentioned to me. I don't know. Let's let's say a hundred times that Jason got uh, how many kids Ryan has wrong. And she was like, he knows he's got three kids. And we sent a fucking gift. And I can't believe it. I'm so mad at Jason for that. So I'm rude. I'm sorry. I don't have fucking daily mail on my toolbar, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Jesus. Nobody's a friend of yours, too. That's rude. Well, but I don't, I, you don't yeah, I barely keep up with your friends on you daily have. mail. You know? Oh, my God. I know. That's true. Jason was also really, uh, I noticed the other day, <laughs> he said to, <laughs> I was drinking these waters that Jason has. And I go, I got these. I was drinking and Archie goes. And then he Well, sees, what are they called? Called. What are they called? Lemon Perfect. Lemon Perfect. It's uh. the best drink in the world. Fucking cool it. We don't need to mention Lemon Perfect just so yeah. you get a free case. That's like twenty dollars worth. Like oh, if they I want, want more to... than it. I want a whole truck. I want. Well, it who on, gives a, a shit schedule. again? Like I unless give they want a to... lot of shit. I know, lemon Perfect I... is incredible. So anyway, Jason's drinking Lemon Perfect and he goes, "Oh, look at Jason." He actually, Archie started to call Jason Bateman recently, a couple of times, and he goes, "Look at Bateman drinking." You got that idea from my dad, and I go, "Actually, you know what?" Archie, I got to be, to be fair, Jason's the one who introduced me to Lemon Perfect. And Jason turns to him and goes, so, with that real <laughs> shitty look. And I go, to did you year old To my 12-year-old. I go, did you just do the thing that we've been doing to each other for 20 years to my 12-year-old? He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, see, so. You mess with the ball, you know what I mean? So... <laughs> Anyway, let's get back to John Stewart. John Stewart. Yeah. This guy, and even if he doesn't know how to spell his first name, I still love him more than most people on the planet. Yeah, he's, he's, I just think he's a perfect combo of smart and funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Guy, can we uh, edit that out? I think he's married, dude, so, yeah. you know, I don't know if you're... But my memory of John Stewart also is just of 
all those just, I don't know, 10 years in a row of being at the Emmys and him just winning every, you know, him going to the stage like three times in the, in the, in the night? Yeah, yeah, with just a, a, a team of the uh, really gifted uh, writers. It's just uh, that show stayed so good for so long. Yeah. I'm so sure they could, they could have done another 20 years just as good. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure he could have. And, and I'm sure he could, if he said today that he wanted, not necessarily the other show, because Trevor Noah is very good, but like if he wanted to do whatever, and he's doing this Apple show, which I'm yeah, excited Yeah, I can't wait about. to see that Apple show. I know. He's, he's so missed. Did he say when that's coming out? No, we can Google it. I, I think he said end of September or at least by October. Bye. Wow. All right, I guess. Bye. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Michael Grant Terry, Rob Armjarv, and Bennett Barbaco. The next episode will be out in a week wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can listen to it right now early and ad-free on Amazon Music or by subscribing to Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. Smartless.